Welcome everybody back to BMG Drive and today we're taking a look at the Oldsmobile Regency Sedan V8 and uh, yeah, big large soft American sedan car uh, from the 80s and yeah, a complete and utter mod so uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, much this can deal with uh, that we're going to throw at it so uh, let's get around the suspension course and see how much it can take before it breaks and then uh, yeah, we'll roll it over, blow it up and uh, crash it through a brick wall so uh, yeah, this has quite soft suspension, so it should take the bumps fine, theoretically. But you never know how these mods are going to uh, react, to be honest. Extremely bouncy. Already lost the tail light and some windows, I think. We lost a window, yeah, we lost the driver's side window. Yeah, it's not the quickest of things, unfortunately I don't have any stats. And we've already lost the radiator, so that's not good. But yeah, even without any stats, it's certainly uh, evident that it's not the quickest of things. Suspension is holding up for now. Lost a tyre, it's not going to help. Oh, nearly rolled over. I think that'd be a first if that happened. Oh, oh dear. Front right wheel has gone. Oh, we've lost another tyre. This car is falling apart and we can barely steer anymore. Come on, get round. Yeah, we've lost all steering. Yeah, we ain't steering anywhere anymore. Yeah, those two wheels are not going in the same kind of direction. We've still got the right hand wheel, but the left hand wheel is just refusing to turn and therefore we're just basically going straight over whatever we uh, come across. So uh, yeah, it's the steering that's let this car down. The suspension seems to have still held up fine. Yeah, the radiator was busted so we'd eventually overheat, but yeah, the rest of the car seemed to have dealt with that okay. So uh, yeah, those wheels are going to be uh, either a make or break for this vehicle. So. Uh, Let's get to the uh, rollover ramp and see how it deals with that. So we have to do three consecutive rollovers, so taking damage each time. And if we can survive all three with, you know, no real uh, intrusion into the passenger uh, compartment, and maybe even still drive, then it will get a pass. Well, there goes the uh, exhaust. But really bothered about that. Right. Let's see what happens. As we saw before, those wheels at the front were really rather uh, weak. Barely even able to take a uh, curb. So will they be able to survive this? Doesn't look like it so far, especially for one of them. may well have already failed this uh, rollover test. I'm not sure if those wheels are going to turn us anymore. Well, the right, left hand one does and the right hand one is barely hanging on so we're still able to steer. Hopefully get up onto the ramp. With some manoeuvring. Yep, just about. Right, let's see if it can handle a second go. Oh, 
the radiator's gone now. That shouldn't prove too problematic though, because we're hardly uh, using the engine all that much doing this. Yep, didn't really take any more damage there. Right, let's go on this side and go around. Steering has gotten a little bit worse, but not so much that we can't get over here for the third and final go. Let's try again. Extremely difficult to get cars up on here that are already damaged. As I'm sure you can appreciate. Right, let's see if this can uh, survive one more go. There goes a piece of trim, I don't know where from. I think it's from a behind the rear axle, uh, on the rear wheel trim. That rear axle does not look healthy whatsoever and neither do all either of those front wheels so I don't think I'm going to be driving anywhere but will the uh, car safety wise still hold up? I think when we impacted the rear right wheel, a bit of trim went flying or something from somewhere. But yeah, uh, let's see if it drives. Nope. That axle has, yeah, squished itself into the bodywork and therefore not being able to move. We might well be able to uh, pull it down. Nope. I think even if we did. Those front wheels are just so skew if that I don't think they would move anyway. No, we're not going to be able to pull that down. So yeah, driving wise, that's a fail. But safety wise, I think this is good enough to uh, give the car an overall pass. There's very little uh, roof intrusion onto the driver or passengers. So uh, yeah, I'm going to give that a pass on that one, because I think overall on the suspension test it was a fail. So it's got 1 out of 4 on this uh, map so far. So let's get to the explosive barrels. I did forget to reset when we got to the ramp, unfortunately. I'll make sure to do that before we uh, hit the barrels. Uh, but yeah, this is a big old tough car, so it should handle this explosion okay. But I've said that about some cars and they haven't, so... Who knows? As per usual, we'll be going into it at 60 miles an hour. Which it will get to. As lazily as this revs, it does get to some kind of speed quite well. wheels at the front have predictably gone, so is the radiator. Bodywork wise that's done okay for now because sometimes when we hit these explosive barrels the fenders will go or the bumper will go or the bonnet will curl up or anything like that and most of the bodywork has stayed in place so that hit on the rear is quite bad. I have to say, overall, it looks fine still, and it's still driving. And it sort of steers. Just not very well. But the main thing here is the fact that it's been able to survive in terms of passenger safety. 
yeah, it's still able to drive, but I really don't not expect that from most cars here, so it's not something I really rate it on. But the, the fact it still moves is uh, good. And the fact it still steers somewhat is good as well. But yeah, overall, passenger safety and driver safety, yeah, once again, a pass. So, uh, yeah, that's now two out of uh, four. So uh, let's see if it can go three out of four uh, by crashing into the cinder block wall. Now this basically is a brick wall, so it should survive this fine. Yes, a bit more bodywork damage than I was expecting, but yeah, everyone inside will be fine. Yeah. Like I said, more bodywork damage than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting the bonnet to curl up that much. Uh, but yeah, predictably the radiator has gone, but nonetheless that is uh, yeah, another pass. So uh, despite a bit of a rocky start on the suspension grid uh, part of this map, uh, this has done 3 out of 4 on this map overall, so that is a, uh, yeah, better than most cars. So let's uh, get to the crash hall and see how this deals with 30, 40 and 60 mile an hour small overlap crashes. Right, so here we are at the crash hall, and uh, yeah, I'm a little bit optimistic about this car, really, because, it, yeah, it's old and uh, quite, you know, overly strong in some regards, so that might well punish the weaker parts of the car, but it's got a huge bonnet and a really rather large engine up front as well, so maybe that will offer more protection. So, yeah, let's see what happens at 30. It should pass this fine. It's in far smaller cars pass this at 30, so... Such a large car with so much bodywork up front should be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Driver's side window once again has cracked and smashed. Seems to be the theme of this uh, episode with this car, but yeah. The car overall has survived, but it's taken far more damage in terms of bodywork than I was expecting it to. I was expecting it to be quite minimal, to be honest, and uh, yeah. That is quite a lot, so that is not putting us in good stead for the rest of this episode. So let's see what happens at 40. Is it going to be a pass or a fail? A pass. We can definitely see parts of the car that are weaker that are now taking more damage. The roof is pushing up slight woods. Uh, the door is bowing out a little bit. But, crucially, not much intrusion in terms of the driver or passenger. So, uh, for now, that is a pass. But I'm really not expecting it to do well at 60 now. That is done that much at 40. So, uh... Yeah, let's uh, find out. Here we go. To oblivion. The whole chassis has come away from the bodywork. Still moves somehow, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have to say that's a fail because look at the steering wheel, look at the dashboard. It's all come towards us. The wheel has come through the foot weld, and more. Um, indicative. As you can see, the driver's seat has moved back, 
which means that you'd flail forwards, not hit an airbag, because there isn't any airbag, hit the hard steering wheel or the dashboard or both, and then come straight back and without any kind of seat support whatsoever because you'd end up travelling further back than you travelled forward. And uh, yeah, that would give you severe wet lash, back injuries and whatever else. So uh, yeah, that's a bit of a catastrophic failure there. I've not really seen any other car have its seat twist around and move backwards quite as severely as that. So uh, yeah, that is a fail, but still 2 out of 3 ain't bad. That means this now has a 5 out of 10. So let's see how it does on the highway where we'll go up against two similarly sized and similar weighted vehicles at 60 miles an hour and then one that really isn't at the same speed. So here we are at the highway and obviously because I don't have any actual weight stats for this car I'm just going to have to base it off um, you know, estimates but yeah we're going to go up against another similar mod in the form of the Chevrolet Impala Com uh, or Capri Impala and uh, yeah same kind of size, same kind of age, and yeah, same kind of uh, mod actually. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens when we uh, throttle this up at 60 and hit each other. Hopefully, head on. Well, I think that's as bad as head on as we're going to get given that these cars like to spear around. Oh, not good. Not good at all. The Chevrolet has actually got on away with that fine in a lot of ways, but this has not. I mean, we've even lost a wheel. Uh, yeah, let's just look at the Chevrolet first, just to see what a car should react like. Let's pull it away. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, the majority of the car has withstood that. It's not crumpled up quite as much as I expected. Yes, the steering wheel has come forward uh, along with the dash slightly, but there is some survivability room there. And yeah, most of that has taken that fine. As opposed to our Oldsmobile, which has crumpled up far more, as you can see by the door. The door is pretty much fine on the uh, Chevy, but the Oldsmobile, uh, Oldsmobile it's gone bent in half practically and uh, yeah I'd say there's less survivability space in there and uh, yeah overall it did look like it took a lot more in the way of damage I mean we've even completely shredded a wheel off it's over here hello here's a wheel uh, so uh, yeah not as convinced about that as I have been before but yeah I'm not going to give it a pass so that's just the way it is. Chevrolet, though, did far better than I was expecting it to. Right, let's look at something a little bit older. Just to see how it does. I think we'll go with the blue book. And we'll go with a wagon. So yeah, this is far older, obviously the uh, Oldsmobile is from the late 70s, mid 80s whereas this is from the 60s see what happens yeah it definitely dealt with that one a lot better purely because I think the blue book is so awful <laughs> Look what's happened to the blue book. This it's the driver would be morphed with the steering wheel. Still works somehow, but yeah, you can see from here that very little survivability space at all, if any at all. Whereas the automobile, yeah, that's a lot better. I wouldn't say it's much better than uh, last time but it is better nonetheless so I think I'm going to give it a pass on that one principally because the door looks a little bit better there's a, looks like a little bit more room in there for the driver and uh, yeah a lot of the energy would have been transferred to the blue book purely because look how much damage it's taken so uh, yeah I'm going to give that a pass not a resounding one by any means but a pass regardless somehow this still moves though despite all of that damage which 
is a big surprise. Right. Let's go up against something far more modern and far heavier. And see how it does. Well, I'm not sure if this is actually going to be heavier, but it is a far more modern car. So I think that will uh, come back on the Oldsmobile a fair bit. Yeah, the newer SUV has a sliced through the uh, older mobile there. We'll look at that again because I think we uh, somewhat lost a bit of uh, impact time. Right, let's see it in a bit more detail. a bit more head-on as well. Oh, the dash is just pushed right down, as well as the steering wheel. Let's move forward. Basically no interior damage at all on the uh, SUV there. And I know it's not the heaviest of things that the, uh, the, go the automobile could go up against, and yeah, the uh, SUV has certainly taken more um, engineering mechanical damage, whereas this does still work. But yeah, you can see from the interior. It's not dealt with that spectacularly, but I think it's done okay. It's just that with the sheer momentum that would be involved, the likelihood of you surviving with no airbag, unlikely to have any real good seat belts or anything like that. Yeah, chances of survival would be next to none. So I'm not going to give it a pass on that front because, yeah. It seems like the ETK, despite its crumple zones and everything like that, is just a far tougher vehicle in terms of what it can deal with in terms of a crash. Whereas despite this, still being able to drive, as I'll show you, has, uh, yeah, driver-wise, not survived that well. So uh, yeah, tough, tough car in terms of its uh, mechanicals, because none of them have really gone wrong, but the front wheels were susceptible to suspension damage and blowouts on the tyres, and uh, yeah, when it comes to modern crash testing, this doesn't quite cut it. But quite frankly, I was expecting a lot worse given its age and overall size, so uh, yeah. So on the whole done really rather well, so that's 7 out of 10, which is not bad at all. We've seen far worse from other vehicles that I expected far better from. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.